Hi and welcome to this video on the awkward topic of taking back control when your email account has been hacked. As an IT professional, I'm regularly asked for help by people who've had their email account hacked and quite a few of them say that it's happened to them before. Each time they will change their password, but it seems to get hacked repeatedly. Unfortunately, this is a really familiar story to me. But in this video, I hope to show you how to fix that by taking the steps that in my experience are needed to regain control of your email account and to ensure it is well protected to avoid future attacks. So the first step I take is to look at antivirus. Now, whilst the majority of hacks are not caused by viruses, if any of your devices are infected, it can somewhat invalidate the steps we're going to take. So I think as a precaution, we should run an antivirus scan on all your devices, not just your primary device. These scans can run in parallel to the remaining steps and ensure that we have a solid baseline on which to build your new security. So we're looking to do a full or thorough scan, whatever is the most comprehensive option within your software. And we're looking to run it on any device that has access to your email or other sensitive data. I'm including in that phones, tablets, laptops, desktops, etc. And it doesn't matter what operating system they run. I know a lot of people believe that Apple and Linux don't get viruses, but unfortunately they do. There are just more viruses targeting Windows because it's more popular on end user devices. So although Windows has its own very good antivirus, I tend to recommend using the free malware bytes software, which I'll include a link to in the description. I use this on Windows and on Mac. On Android, I recommend Avast, which is a free app available in the Google Play Store. Once we've got the antivirus running, we can move on to the second step, which is to change your email password. As obvious as this may seem, it's a critical step and one we need to get right. So the reason we do this is quite simply because the hacker may know your password. If they haven't changed it, you can simply log into your email account and change your password. But if they've changed it, you may find yourself locked out, but you should find that your email provider has an option called something like forgotten my password underneath the password box as you log in. And that should send you a text to your phone or however you've set up an alternative way to prove that you are the owner of the email account. What's absolutely critical at this point is not to reuse the same password, obviously you've already had, or a password you've previously used for this email or anything else. Creating a secure password is a whole topic unto itself, so I will shamelessly plug at this moment one of my other videos which shows you how to create and reuse secure passwords, and I'll put a link to that in the description as well. In terms of quick tips here, Never reuse the password for banking, for email addresses, or one from your job into your personal life. Think of a password as being a passphrase rather than a password, so make sure it's got multiple words as part of it. And be aware that longer passwords are better than just highly complex ones with characters and numbers, etc. It's often easier to remember something that's slightly obscure but in your own language than trying to create a complete mess of characters. This is the point a lot of people get to and draw the line and then find down the line that they're getting rehacked. So I do encourage you to continue to look at the further points. These are really key if you want to make sure that the hacker does not retain or regain access to your account. On that note, the next thing we're going to look at is your email account settings. So these will vary from provider to provider but are really key. If the hacker has had access to your account, they will quite likely have used these settings to retain access despite any future password changes. I'm going to use Outlook Mail as an example to show you the kind of settings to look out for. This is because it's very popular and has plenty of settings that demonstrate very well why we should be evaluating them and making sure that they are still valid. So as an example here within Outlook itself here online, I'm going to go up to the settings cog in the top right here and you can search for a setting. But actually, if you go all the way to the bottom, you'll find there's a view all settings, which is what we need. Um, they're a little bit crafty, I think, Microsoft here. They obviously send you to the email setting because you're within Outlook, but there is actually a general section above and you need to go through every single one of these options, I'm afraid, to be properly thorough and sure that you're protecting yourself. So I'll just pick a couple of examples. So within the general area, 
there's a mobile devices section now because this is a demo account i don't actually have my phone in here but again the hacker could choose to be synchronizing your mailbox if they've had access to your account for a period to some form of mobile device uh, in the background and so password changes etc would not necessarily affect these devices so as you go through the options just be considering whether or not things are set correctly so particularly things like phones here there's also within email here uh, I think it would be within compose yes we have the email signature could just be used to catch uh, people out that you're sending things to by putting bits and pieces in there um, and there is uh, well in fact rules I've set up one here just to um, to demonstrate what they might have done I'm sure they wouldn't call it forward to hacker that might be a bit of a giveaway um, but in this case I've got this rule set up so anything that comes in with the word password written into it will automatically forward the email on to an outside address so this is quite a crafty tactic that hackers can use so again rather than picking I don't want to show you just the settings there is a forwarding one um, I don't want to show you just the settings to look at go through every single setting because they do change and if you find one that you disagree with you can either do things like disabling them if in terms of things like rules in my case I'm going to delete that that rule should not exist um, in my normal mailbox here I won't go through Outlook specific settings any deeper just because there'll be people watching this with all different types of provider. But as I say, go through in depth every single setting and just make sure that the setting in there is correct for you. Anything that doesn't look right is probably worth removing at this point given the situation. The next step relates to your email settings and is to set up something called multi-factor authentication, sometimes referred to as two-factor authentication. Simply put, multi-factor authentication uses multiple ways, known as factors, for validating your identity. In the case of email, it's not as complex as it sounds. The most common setup is to request a password and if the device you're using to access your email is not known to the email provider, they will send a message to your phone with a unique code or button for you to press to prove the second factor. Once logged in, you could mark that device as trusted and then you would generally just be able to log in with your password, although most providers would still occasionally ask the message to the phone just to keep that extra layer of security. So hopefully you can see how simple this process is for you once set up but actually how much more complex it is for someone attempting to hack into your system, even if they know your password already. So as most of the major email providers, such as Microsoft and Google, provide this service for free, I highly recommend that you go into the security settings of your account at this point and set up this multi-factor authentication. As we've seen, simply linking your account to your smartphone is a really simple way of securing your account. Just make sure that you make a clear note of the recovery code that you'll be provided as part of setting this up and that you look after that code because it would be provided as a way of bypassing the multi-factor authentication if you were to lose your phone, etc. So I don't recommend keeping it online. You could have it digitally, but keep it completely separate as in offline, um, or you could keep it written down in a secure location at home. Bear with me, we are nearly there now. For this next item, we're actually considering your friends and family, etc. While in your email account, I recommend looking at any sent items and in the recycle bin, deleted items, etc. Just see if there's anything in there that you have not put in there yourself. The reason for this is to check that the hacker has not used your email account to impersonate you. So just check there are no items that you disagree with in terms of perhaps an email that's gone out to your friends saying that you're in desperate need of some money and providing a bank account for people to send money to. At this point, I believe we've secured your email account, but there is more that needs to be considered. Your email address is likely to be registered with a number of services that will use this to identify who you are. As uncomfortable as it may be to consider, it is possible that the hacker has used the forgotten password functionality of one of those sites, such as LinkedIn, to get access to that other account. I therefore recommend in this step making a full and comprehensive list of all sites you can think of that use your email address. 
most importantly is to prioritize financial websites such as your bank, PayPal and anything else that has card details on it. We should also prioritize any account that used your old email password. The reason being hackers will keep a note usually of the email address and old password and will search common websites such as Facebook etc to see if those credentials get them into the website. If they do they've potentially gained access to those accounts as well. I know this step seems really painful but is an essential step in case someone has access to those accounts. My recommendation would be to set up the multi-factor authentication like we did with email, set it up with any key services that you use such as your bank account. In addition, consider using a password safe. Google, for example, have one that's built into Chrome. And if you use one of these, you can use different passwords fairly comfortably across websites without having to worry about remembering them. So in summary, we're looking to reset the password on any website which used your email address and particularly where they use your email address and your old email password, financial websites, and any website that someone could conduct a purchase using your cards, maybe Amazon or eBay, are the sites that you should be prioritizing. Apologies, I know that is a super huge step to do, and it is critical to take your time to go through this as thoroughly as you reasonably can do. Finally, it's time to return to our devices that we set up antivirus on at the start of this, both to check the results of those antivirus scans but also to look at whether the operating system and other key software is up to date. For Windows, if you're running a version older than Windows 10, you'll no longer be receiving security updates. So I highly recommend looking at upgrading to Windows 10 and then running the Windows update process or visiting update.microsoft.com to install the patches relevant to your machine. Don't forget that your machine may need a series of restarts and may receive new updates following those restarts. So reboot your machine after you've run this and rerun the update process and repeat that cycle until no further updates are possible. For Mac OS, from the Apple menu, go to System Preferences and Software Update. Or for older versions, you may need to go to the App Store and go to Updates. It's also key to keep smartphones and tablets up to date, but don't forget that there is a limit to what your phone or tablet hardware can support. So there comes a point where you will no longer receive security updates. So it's quite important for iOS and for Android to keep an eye on when the latest update was performed to make sure that your device is still supported. If it is no longer supported, you need to consider your options to either replace the device or consider putting a custom operating system on the device yourself. The update process on iOS, where supported, is to click Settings, General, and then Software Update. For Android, the menu settings can vary. You should find the System or Software Update option under the System or About My Phone menu option in Settings. Once you've updated your operating system, don't forget to update any other key software you have installed on your device. Whilst the update procedures for these may vary, you'll often find the update option under the help menu or under help and about. And you'll be glad to know that completes this mammoth guide. I've tried to keep this guide as focused as I can on the important tasks, but I do feel I need to apologize for the length of this and the pain it puts you through. But fingers crossed, we've got you in a position where your accounts are now safe and they're set up in a more secure way going forward. We've also looked at your devices at the same time. If this video has been helpful, please hit the like button, subscribe to this channel and consider leaving a comment in the section below. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.